G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to IL-2 with Mags and this time IL-2 Cliffs of Dover. So for today's flight we are playing as the Germans and we are bringing out the BF 109E4 and we're defending German airfields on the French side of the English Channel from English attack aircraft that are coming across to hit the runways and surrounds just south of Calais. The lead British flight are Bofords, which the BF-110s will be taken care of. Our job is to hunt down and destroy the Bowfighters and the Spitfires that are flying across with them. Now, I didn't record a live track on this particular flight, so I'm just going to drop in with some commentary every now and again explaining what's going on. At this point, we have spotted the Bowfighters coming in behind the Bofords. Our flight of four has split into two. Two are heading off to intercept the Spitfires ahead while we're coming around to take out the Bowfighters. Now the 110s have just hit the British formations from the front, so the Bowfighters have gone defensive. They're actually picking up altitude at the moment. So the plan here was to come in from underneath and spike the Bowfighters at the peak of their climb, or at least spike one of them at the peak of their climb. Unfortunately, give it a little bit too much stick. Relatively straightforward to recover, and I didn't have the altitude for it, but I did lose the first bowfighter in the process of doing that, and I did cock up the shot, obviously. However, on the way back down, I did spot a second bowfighter that was coming in from underneath. Now, as a general rule, I prefer to get really close to the target before pulling the trigger. This is actually too far out for my preference, but I didn't think I was going to have a better opportunity, and my initial impressions were, were that I actually missed the target. As it turned out, reviewing the after-action report, I didn't. I did actually land some shots home and was awarded this kill. Now, I'm not exactly sure what I did here, but, as you can see, the aircraft, after completing its rollover and taking the hits, just sort of flops down inverted into the ocean. Now, I'm not sure if one of those shells was lucky enough to hit the cockpit and actually take the pilot out, or whether or not I severed part of the flight control system, but one or the other is most likely. Now, at this point, I saw a black dot just above the horizon heading in my direction, so I wasn't 100% sure on what it was, but best to turn in and check it. And as it turns out, it is a second bowfighter. Now, I don't know whether or not it's coming back looking to meet up with a mate, or whether or not it's attacked the target and is trying to get back out to the channel to cross back to merry old England. But uh, either way, I don't want it to go home. Couple of shots into the V stab in the elevators. Now, this is the kind of range that I normally like to get before pulling the trigger, and then that happened. Yes, the loss of control was entirely because of a giant oh shit moment that uh, I was not expecting. Jamming every flight control hard left all at the same time is. Not something you would normally do, but we didn't hit any of the debris, so that's fine, and that is most certainly a second bow fighter going down, and one that we don't need to question exactly how we shot down. Now, at this point, I had mostly lost track of all targets inside of the area. I couldn't see any Bofords flying around. I couldn't even see any allies at this point. I have no idea where the rest of my flight or where the BF-110s have gone. I've completely lost track of everybody at this point. I thought I could potentially see somebody back on my 6 or a dot back on my 6, but I wasn't 100% that I wasn't just seeing things. So I just started doing a slow loop around the area with the intent to cruise up and down the coastline. I know where my runway is from about here, and if I don't find anything soon, I was just going to head back. And then these two showed up peeling over the top of me and giving me a little bit of a clue as to what might be going on. 
a pair of Mark 1 Spitfires. Now, if these two are here and nobody else is engaging them at the moment, which they didn't appear to be, it's highly likely that the two 109s that broke off at the start of the engagement are already dead. Now, the Spitfires are above me and they've got the altitude advantage here, but they're not engaging me yet. I'm not entirely sure why, but I took the opportunity to try and spike up underneath one of them and get a shot. Did actually manage to clip him, but only with the MGs. And I'm not entirely sure whether or not I managed to get him on the return there. This is why spits be scary, they just opened up the throttles and they are able to open up a gap and increase altitude against me at exactly the same time. I actually lose them here for a second as they disappeared into the sun directly above me. Not gonna lie, at this point it was feeling more like I was flying a warp under match with Spitfires constantly pulling away from me and then pulling over my head. Would have really, really been happy if we had a couple of extra 109s free at this point as well, but uh, it's just me and them. And at this point, once again, I lost them. Now, you saw me pick them back up again as they exited out from the sun. I knew they went over the top of me, I knew they dropped down behind me, but I had no idea exactly where they were after that. So, unable to get visual, the best I could do is open up the throttles and start trying to climb away, picking up some altitude of my own to use against them. They had, however, looped back around and were closing on me from behind. And that was my cooling system. And that was the last I saw of them for this entire engagement. Um, I wasn't entirely sure where they'd gone after this, maybe somebody else had shown up to engage them. Reviewing the replays, they appeared to put the shots into me, do two turns in the position they were at and then head back across the channel back towards England. So I'm assuming they hit bingo fuel and it was time for them to go home. So I'm desperately checking my six at this point, trying to find the Spitfires that are about to kill me, not realising that at this point they've pretty much let me go. And that was pretty much the end of this flight. From here I flew for a little bit until the uh, it was clear the engine was starting to have a few problems. And I'm relatively close to the Calais airfield from here. It's only a couple of miles out, so I just flew over and put the thing down. Nothing else particularly interesting. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little dogfight. Thank you very much for watching. This is something that I'm going to be doing a little bit more of, I hope, on the channel. Um, I have been watching how much you guys actually watch of the full-length videos from takeoff to landing, and it's... Well, it's not all of it. So I'm going to try and shrink down the engagements to around the 10 minute mark, unless they happen to be longer than 10 minutes, showing only the interesting and the exciting points, rather than having 30, 40, 50 minute videos, including takeoffs and landings and everything else that happens along the way. So try and sharpen things up for you guys and keep it exciting. Let me know in the comments section what you think, and until next time, remember to click that like button if you did, share and subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, take care.